so even here, there are people who are still in that place where we need to go through that shift from kingdom to new covenant. And the Lord's done a lot of work in your thinking, in your hearts this weekend already. And He's going to continue. Some of those seeds are going to really grow over the next weeks and months. But there's definitely a presence right now that, that the Lord is has specific words to speak to specific people. Uh, I would like to invite Jim to come back up and Apostle Dave. David, if you'd come join me. And, and Matthew, would you come up as well? And uh, uh, just be prepared as, as the Holy Spirit's putting words on you. We're going to begin to just flow and share and, and call those out. Um, I... I I often, uh, as you can tell, have a, a theological side that I walk in. Uh, you, you have experienced a lot of that over this weekend. Um, when I first started in ministry, the, the, Lord, the first book that, that I wrote, the Lord put on me this seer gifting, and I wrote The School of the Seers and launched out into a prophetic ministry, which then has shifted quite a bit over the last few years. Uh, part of that was, uh, as a seer, the Lord had certain uh, angelic, uh, uh, angelic uh, beings that were assigned that traveled with me when I would minister, and it shifted about four years ago. And I got, I'm, I'm being very transparent with you right now, um, I got a, a different angel assigned to me, and he's super quiet, and he almost never says anything, and he's very intimidating and scary looking, and I was like, Lord, this, I don't understand what, what just happened, because before I had sort of the chatty Kathy crowd that came with me, and... And just lots and lots of prophetic stuff would happen. And uh, another individual who could see that, that he came and I, I met him at one meeting, actually in Florida, in a different part of Florida, this is about four or five years ago, and he described this new angel. He said, this is a recent assignment, this is what he looks like, and here's what's going on. He said he's like the angel that came and destroyed 185,000 of the Assyrians in the Old Testament and the Lord says this is a theology angel and he's assigning him to you because you are meant to just hack down wrong thinking, hack down wrong theology in the body of Christ and he's assigned this to you. So I'm still, I still operate in the prophetic as a prophet, as a seer, but the Lord's put a whole different twist on what he's calling me to do in the body. And so uh, now I, I primarily stick with the, the theological side until I see that sometimes the Lord will have a prophecy angel show up in a meeting. So I was waiting for that and watching for that. And I, I believe I, I saw about halfway through the last song the presence of that prophecy angel. And that's how I know it's time to shift gears. So we're setting aside the theology for now. And we're going to move into the prophecy side. And so I want to speak over King's Church right now. That's where I'm going to start. And I'm going to open the floor up here. And so uh, the Lord would say over King's Church, that you have done well, you've persevered, you've done well and persevered, you've done well and persevered. You have been through hard times. He says it three times because over the last three years there have been hard, hard, hard times that you have made it through and you have been faithful and you have persevered and you've gone through transition and transition and transition. And he says that this next year you're going to see growth but it's going to be different than what you're looking for. It's not going to be a mega church. It's not going to explode into giant numbers. He says he's bringing you quality. Yes. He's bringing you quality. So the people, the people that he's bringing, he's aligning, people that will have your heart, people that will have your radical DNA, people that will be on board with what the Lord has called you to do, that he's aligning them even before he brings them here. And so he's, he's making this shift and you're going to see people of quality come and join King's Church. Not just quantity, but quality will come into this house.
And even as a, it's the special forces, it's not the qu the quantity, but the quality of the uh, soldiers. And uh, even as the Lord has called this place to be a special forces uh, portion of the army of God. And I uh, saw the Lord uh, wanting to say that the, the, the picture of the difference between um, how many seeds are in an apple versus how many apples are in a seed and uh, that there are seeds that are going out from this place that are being produced in this place that are going to actually produce orchards and so uh, the accruing of, of uh, reward in heaven is uh, not by uh, the things that you see uh, even uh, in the physical and the, the evident numbers or any of that kind of thing but rather the uh, multitudes that are affected by the seeds that are sent out of this place because I see great great uh, accruing of fruit an accruing of fruit an accruing of fruit and uh, uh, much more fruit than you could even imagine uh, has been accrued in heaven and will be accrued in heaven uh, because of what you're doing and the perseverance that you've done in this place the time of rest the seventh day is your portion says the Lord he says because in that day it's the day of fulfillment and completion he says take your ease for I have done what you asked and I have finished it says the Lord and I, I see the picture of the Phoenix that was brought up out of the ashes he says what they said would not live again you breathed life into and it lives it might not be fully grown but it lives it lives with the life of God. Amen. Uh, just something that I heard real quick. I heard the Lord saying of the King's Church, it's a place where heavyweights will come. It's not about numbers. It's about weight measurements. And, and I hear the Lord saying people of caliber will come in to be trained and equipped. It's hard to grow an equipping center because you're receiving and sending out, receiving and sending out. And I hear the Lord saying that you're going to have a presence and an influence in arenas you would never dream because of those that would come to you to receive and be trained. So I just hear the Lord saying, even over this house, there's a, a specialist anointing. Not that you're pushing away anybody, but there's, a, there's a, a specific anointing on the house that people will come. I see even from around the world will come and say, teach me, show me what I need to know, uh, bring me the impartation that I'm hungering for, and then once it's done, send them back out. Uh, and, then, and then, of course, along the way, as, as I, what, what Jonathan was saying, I, I hear the Lord saying that pillars are coming also into the local work. Pillars that will come and join, and there'll be sources of strength, sources of stability. So, Lord, we just decree that now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And to Pastor Shane, Prophet Shane. Hallelujah, what a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard the Lord saying that he's, uh, he is, uh, you want, uh, the Lord wants you to be assured that he's looking out for your family. And that there's been a, con a kind of a secret concern uh, uh, in ways that you've uh, even put, you felt like you've put your family at risk and you've uh, even uh, done things that uh, uh, for the sake of the kingdom that you felt like, Lord, is this putting my family at risk? And the Lord says, uh, son, because you've done that and because you've uh, concerned yourself with my house, I am concerning myself with your house. And I'm going to take care of you. And I'm going to make sure that you have everything that you need. And I'm going to bring you health and wholeness and prosperity to your home, says the Lord. Let's stretch our hands towards this couple. Lord, I thank you for these wonderful servants, this son and daughter of the king. And I just hear the Lord saying, son, there's about to come a radical shift in your life, in your ministry. The Lord is saying it's not going to be a content shift as much as it's going to be a, 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 of how you release the word. And I see in that release there are going to be many who will hear, many who will come and begin to respond. Right now, this is something that's been on you, and I didn't know how to say it, but I hear the Lord saying it this way. The good old boy is gone. That good old boy mentality is over. I hear the Lord saying, I declare you as world class. I declare you as first class, as top notch. You're going to be amazed. 
that those who want to make a demand on you, and I hear the Lord saying, clear that old boy mentality out of your vocabulary. That is not who you are. You're a son of righteousness. You're royalty in my kingdom, says the Lord. If you need any more proof positive, just look at the crown that I've given you as a wife. And I hear the, I hear the Lord saying, woman of God, it's time for you to come into your prophetic call in a way like you have not yet realized. There are times where you have moments of explosive authority and passion. And I hear the Lord saying, for a while now, it's time to put the lamb away for the lioness to begin to roar forth the word that I put on the inside of her. So now's the time, man and woman of God. And of course, it's going it, to... I just see there's something even divine happening with a transfer with your children. It's much more than just an anointing that's on a family. But I hear the Lord saying, even at young ages, the children will begin to pursue and they'll see demonstrations of the miraculous and the supernatural. Because within them, you know there is no small God. There is no small spirit. But He is mature and alive and well in them. And I also hear the Lord saying, Son, you've always had this mentality of searching out fathers. But I hear the Lord saying, Son, you're also coming into your own fatherhood. As even now you father young children. Don't run from it when there are those that come and begin to make a demand on you as father. I see at times you're like, listen, okay, I'll relate to you as a pastor. I'll relate to you as a brother, but I'm not sure about this father thing yet. And I hear the Lord saying, son, you can't run from it. You're an emerging father in this day. Embrace it. Don't run from it. So, Lord, I thank you. They're already anointed far above and beyond what they understand. And, Lord, right now, we just go ahead. I, I make a demand on the fullness that is on the inside of this man and woman of God. The nations are waiting. The nations are ready to receive you. We just speak it forth right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. My, my brother here, I don't know what your first name is, but uh, the Lord says the brokenness I made from broken hearts to broken dreams to broken pasts, even to the fact there's broken futures. He said, but I take things broken, I put them back together again. But when I put you together, you won't be what you were. Because others will st still see the cracks where you've been mended. That's the scars that have some been self-inflicted. But he says, I'm mending the brokenness. Because I'm going to be to you a God and a Father. So that what I've called you to can come to its full fruition. He says, release yourself to be mended. Put yourself in the potter's hand to be mended. Because you can't get there broken. That broken thing that others haven't even seen. He says, I've known about it. And I heal it right now. There's a healing. Even as the message was coming tonight, healing was taking place on the inside of you. Healing. 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 Only that which God can mend. He's putting back together again. And uh, Apostle Dave, uh, the Lord's just been really smiling on what you've been doing. The Lord's been really pleased with what you've been doing. But there's been almost like a, uh, there's fruitfulness, but you're still not satisfied because it hasn't really been uh, the the level of fruitfulness that you've been wanting and seeing. And uh, uh, what I heard the Lord say is to, to tell you this about this proverb that we hear that if you keep on doing what you've always been doing, you'll keep on getting the same result. But the Lord says that isn't always true because uh, they, uh, <clears throat> Peter fished all night. He knew what he was doing. He was doing all the right stuff. Okay, But then there came a point where Jesus stepped in the boat and he did it again. But it produced a whole lot more fruit. And what I heard the Lord saying is keep on doing what you've been doing because I'm getting ready to step in your boat and you're going to see a multiplication. You're going to be you're going to begin to see the kind of fruitfulness. Uh, the Lord says you've been doing the right stuff. 
it's just not been a, a timing thing or whatever, but, but the Lord's get there's a shift happening right now. I'm telling you, there's a shift happening. You've already been feeling it. There's a shift happening, and the Lord is getting ready to step in your boat in a way that you're going to see an amazing level of power and grace coming into what you've been doing, and it's going to be multiplied fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, for for Sandy and Jesse, let's stretch our hands towards them. I just hear the Lord saying, son and daughter, that I, I've seen the sacrifice. I saw everything you had to endure. Your heart set on being in one place and you felt captive in yet another place and all that process that you endured and even at times, even the, the question of the heart was, is this going to happen? But now you're standing at the very, in the midst of the beginning of the promises and even the expectations and I hear the Lord saying now it's time just to put that behind you put all that behind you it's over with now and I just see you beginning to settle into your own almost like a, a boxer when they fall back into their stance and they begin to take some ease but it's not so they give up it's so they can build up to begin to throw the punches that, that you're ordained to throw and I just see this in this house part of the shift that's necessary is a worship shift a praise and worship shift. And I'm going to use the two of you to bring this shift, your catalyst for a change in the atmosphere. And listen, I, I just see this. The next two years, there's going to be a radical shift in the worship team. I see more musicians coming, skilled musicians, skilled vocalists, uh, and, and not just people that have ability, but people that know how to worship. People that know how to provide an atmosphere for a tangible manifestation of the presence of God. And I hear the Lord saying, even within you, your heart has been God. We want to shift from singing songs about you, but we want you to sing your songs through us. And I hear the Lord saying, I'm taking you at your word. I see just a, a new creative flow coming through you. And whereas sometimes it's felt like a dripping faucet, this is going to be like a fire hose pulled back on high. And, and I just see sometimes there's going to be nights you're like, God, you've just got to stop. I've got to go to sleep because you're going to have songs and melodies and you're going to hear the creative heart of who I am coming uh, just, just from the womb of your spirit. So Lord, right now we just release that blessing on them. Lord, I thank you. They're here right on time. Your desire was to be here ahead of time. But I hear the Lord saying, now you're right on time. You haven't missed anything. This is the ordained time. This is the season where you are needed as a catalyst. And it's only the beginning. Uh, even as the gospel that's proclaimed from this house is rich and full of depth, so shall the worship also be the same way. You're not simply going to sample other people's work, but you're going to begin to tap into creativity and you're going to release sounds that the earth has never witnessed before. So Lord, I just thank you right now as they steward the heavenlies, as they steward that release of creative sounds. Lord, let it touch people's hearts. I see people being delivered right in the midst of worship. I see people being healed right in the midst of worship where, where there would come an opportunity for someone to say, okay, if you need healing, come up. It's already happened. Because of that tangible presence of God in the midst, birthed through worship. So Lord, we just thank you for it now in the, in the strong and mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And also, just to tag on to that, with every fresh move of God comes fresh messages from God and fresh manifestations from God and fresh music from God. And God strategically placed you in this place uh, to even become a wellspring of fresh music. And so get your recording uh, equipment ready, get your pen ready, get ready, because the Lord's going to begin to just cause there to be an eruption of fresh music, fresh themes of music, and the, that, that will reinforce the message and the manifestation of the new move of God that's afoot. And uh, these guys, hallelujah, what a blessing these people are. And uh, Stan, I, I uh, felt like I heard the Lord saying or showing me that uh, there's been cycles in your life, and that early on in your life, uh, you were uh, you uh, were you found yourself deep in the supernatural. Okay, and then uh, then, then there's been seasons, and I kind of. Uh, 
my observation, and this is probably many people's observation, uh, uh, is you as a theologian. But what they don't realize is that there's a uh, there's a deep reservoir of power gifts inside of you. And I heard the Lord saying that even even as you've been known as a theologian, you're going to become more and more known as a uh, a healer and a, a worker of miracles. Because I saw the Lord stirring that back up inside of you. And it's even been a little bit dormant. But I just saw that there's going to come a time where your reputation is even more as a uh, man of the spirit and a man of power. Power gifts. I saw power gifts. I saw healing flowing out of your ministry. Healing flowing out of your hands. And I just saw the Lord just beginning to cause lightning bolts to hit you and to just fill you with power. And there's a fresh and it's not, not like it's coming from the outside even though, but but that there's some reservoir inside of you that's been there a long time and the gifts and callings are without repentance. And so Lord, we just call that forth. Lord, those power gifts. We call them forth. We say, come forth in the name of Jesus. And I just saw you beginning to even just put yourself out on a limb and put God out on a limb. Uh, say, God, come on through or else I'm sunk <laughs> and he'll come through for you. I saw you just uh, taking a risk and laying hands and watching God do it. And uh, so uh, we just thank you, God, for that gift of faith that's inside of him. Lord, that, uh, those uh, power gifts and those manifestations in Jesus' name. I heard the Lord say that He is going to begin to reposition you in a way that you're going to begin to reproduce after your own kind. For the Lord says, Son, I have not raised you up to leave and to take you from this earth without many that will be able to take up where you had left off and to continue the work and to even take it to a higher place. So the Lord says, I am going to begin to reposition you. And the Lord says, I'm even going to give you time and rest to be able to see the potentials that you are going to pour into and see them rise up in the same faith that you walk in, says the Spirit of the Lord. And the Lord says that you will leave a legacy and that legacy will continue. And they will say, my father in the gospel will stand new. And I am where I am today, and I am here in this nation, as a missionary in this nation. And I am traveling the world because of the message of the kingdom that was presented to me by my Father in the Gospel. And I hear the Lord say, stand new. See, three, three particular issues, areas the Lord's going to deal with. He says, first of all, even as healing becomes a part of what you exercise, healing becomes a part of you. He says, I'm, I'm touching that for strengthening. He's restoring. Do not panic with it. It's just the old tent. He's patching it. And he's making it right. Secondly, he says, I'm awakening a fresh passion. A passion where you will just weep before him. And the presence of God will be so thick and, and real. He says, but out of, out of that passion, he was moved with compassion and something started to flow. Out of that passion realm, something's going to flow. And then the third area, he says, ancient weaponry. I'm coming to unveil ancient weaponry. I don't exactly understand what that means. But he's, that revelation as the, as the unveiling is going to be those things with, that have been hidden for ages. He's now making known. And uh, he's, he's gifting it to you. He's gifting it to you. Amen. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you don't come behind in any way as a uh, pastor. Uh, you're the, you're, you, in fact, you're the pastoral uh, heart, heart of this operation here <laughs> in, in many ways. But also, the Lord just really wanted me to acknowledge before uh, uh, and to commend you for that incredible discerning gift. Uh, th this lady is a tremendous treasure of discernment. And uh, even uh, uh, that uh, the Lord just wanted to like almost like honor you publicly for what you've done privately because uh, as you've uh, many times you've seen what's wrong and you've prayed right again those things that are wrong and that operation of discernment but also that operation of the pastoral heart and uh, I see even uh, uh, things shifting to where it's like you're going to be more honored than than you have been in the past you're going to be almost like a uh, um, elevated to a new level where in s scenarios in the past that hasn't uh, what you are and who God made you to be hasn't been able to really be celebrated but it's getting ready to be celebrated hallelujah
I just wanted to say something in the natural. Those are my friends right there. I, I love the Newtons very much. Uh, and I'm sure the Lord says that too. But uh, we need to be in prayer uh, for them, uh, especially now Stan has had a unique and amazing opportunity to open up to him where he's going to be pouring into leaders in Bulgaria and just pouring in and pouring in. Amen. And, uh, and Stan, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the very guys you've connected with this weekend aren't joining you from time to time as you pour into leaders. You'll say, hey guys, I brought in some other guys. You can, you can receive from them as well. So we need to have our hearts prepared and open. Amen. So Lord, just bless the Newtons abundantly, abundantly, abundantly. You know, few of us in here have the salt that they have to go to an, a land that's not their own and, and stay there for 14 years pioneering truth. But that's what they've done, and, the, and they have been content. Now, when I say content, I don't mean without struggle. Don't, don't mistake me. They have contented themselves, let's put it that way. So, Lord, greater effectiveness, much more, much more, much more, even in the most difficult places where you say there's no way we're going to be received. God says, especially those, we will be received. So, Lord, we just thank you for it now. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord praise for that. Hallelujah. Can I, can I give you a word, Jonathan? I don't know, you know, some, some guy, don't lay, lay, <laughs> don't lay, you know, don't lay your hands on any man suddenly, you know, you don't know, but <laughs> I won't hurt you. Let's stretch our hands towards, towards Jonathan. Lord, we just thank you for your son. Lord, we thank you for the gift that he is to the body of Christ. Lord, I just thank you for his heart. Uh, I hear the Lord saying, son, that I'm pleased with your sincerity, that I am pleased with your earnest desire. Uh, to, to see freedom come into the hearts of my people. And there are times where you've, you've, you've laid aside your opinion, you've laid aside your comfort, you've laid aside many of your own desires for the purpose of earnestly showing people truth of earnestly pouring out yourself. And I hear the Lord saying, the many sacrifices that you have made, surely you know that they are not unnoticed, but they are seen. And I hear the Lord saying, son, in this season you're coming into, there's going to be some great battles, there's going to be some great fights, and I see there's going to be an increase of wisdom in you and in your ministry. You're going to begin to know which fights to pick at just the right moment. But I hear the Lord saying, son, you will never be alone in the fight. There'll be times where you're going to have to take the first step, but you're always going to find comrades. I see that captains and commanders who are by your side telling you, reminding you, you're not at this alone. Oftentimes the pioneering spirit is romanticized, but I hear the Lord saying people forget it's pioneers that tell others don't drink this water, it's poisonous. You've gone to where the cliff is and you've gone back a mile and said, don't go this way. There's a cliff at the end. And so I just hear the Lord saying, son, that anointing is on you, but you're not simply called to pioneer hard places. I hear the Lord saying you're going to enjoy the fruit of your labor. Your inheritance will not be stored up for someone else. It'll be enjoyed by you, enjoyed by your wife and your children. The one you have, the one's coming. Lord, we just thank you now. Increase and multiply him. And I hear the Lord saying you're going to begin to have the ears of kings. You're going to have the ears of those in authority and power. And I'm not addressing church right now. I'm talking about there will be those in positions within governments and nations. They'll begin to hear the gospel, even as tonight you spoke of my servant Paul, who had a heart to go to those in places of government in order to release a word that is true. I hear the Lord saying, son, you carry truth. It's not just Christian truth. Yeah. It's not just kingdom truth. You carry me. You carry truth. And I hear the Lord saying, uh, don't be amazed when you begin to get phone calls when people say, uh, listen, I believe you, you can talk with this senator. You can talk with this governor. And you'll say, Lord, what will I have to say? And the Lord says, you already know what to say. Just be who you are. And I also see a greater increase of finances. Right now, you are not nearly equipped as you need to be concerning the assignment that I have for you, says the Lord. But I see there's going to come an overwhelming uh, system, an overwhelming uh, just release of financial support, but I also see wealthy benefactors. 
some, some key people, very wealthy, are going to release large sums. But I see it's almost like the story of the widow. They're going to hear the gospel in a way they've never heard it before. And they're going to rejoice within themselves. And that's what's going to bring that desire for them to begin to sow and to bless your ministry. I also hear the Lord saying that there's going to be expansion of, of, your, uh, uh, of, of the school. You know, the, the, the vision you have for the school, the multiple campuses. I see international campuses. I see international bases within multitudes. Uh, of international uh, uh, locations. And I see there are times where you're going to feel like you're on a plane all the time. You're going to be between this base and that base and that base. But I hear the Lord saying that's not going to be at the sacrifice of your family. I'm going to let you do what you need to do and you're going to be able to keep your family close to you. Because you carry the truth of covenant and you can't very well neglect the covenant of family and preach covenant to others. So Lord, right now I just thank you for his lovely wife. I've never met her. I, kn I know her by the Spirit. Lord, the grace that is upon her is sufficient. Lord, and she's a minister in her own right. Lord, I thank you. Lord, open up the doorways and the avenues. She, she's got, I know she can minister to anybody, but I hear the Lord saying she's going to gain such traction in, for women in ministry. Yeah. Women that have not only had uh, a, a low esteem of who they are in God, but a low esteem of, of what they perceived as the system of a male-dominated priesthood. And I hear the Lord saying when she comes with that new covenant truth and she begins to show them who they really are, there's going to be such traction. I see her standing beside some heavy weights in the Spirit. She's going to really gain in her authority and her position. So Lord, we just speak a blessing over the wealth and family. Lord, they're already blessed, but I just want to pour as much more on top of it as I can. Lord, I want to add whatever I can, whatever, however small that portion is. Lord, greater effectiveness, greater greater clarity, greater power. And, and Jonathan, I really hear this, that as your release of the gospel becomes more sure, that the connection of signs, wonders, and miracles following is going to be greatly empowered. That people will hear the word and you're going to see arms grow out. People are going to hear the word and you're going to begin to see blind eyes open. One is not at the expense of the other. The kingdom of God is both and. So Lord, we thank you as he plummets the depths of theology, let him also soar into the heights of demonstration of the, the power and spirit of the Lord. Lord, we just decree this now in the strong and mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Awesome. Just a little bit of a tag on to that, uh, that uh, there's going to be a overwhelming consolation coming to you for the uh, the the prices that you've paid and even the, the route that you've had to go and even there was times where you felt like well God it seems like you're picking on me that I have to go this route and everybody else can go that route and uh, the the kind of limitations and it's almost like you theologically know uh, that uh, that grace is not um, irresistible but sometimes you feel have felt like it is because God God has so pulled you along the trail that he had for you. Uh, and that's because the Lord has handpicked you. And he's, he's called you and has uh, even prepared you. And even as, uh, it's interesting that Germany is really strong on your heart because even as the Reformation came out of Germany, there's like that level of um, major movement that's about ready to happen. But I also heard the Lord saying that even as you gain global influence, you're going to have global influence, but there's also going to be geographical authority. It's like global influence, but there's going to be certain geographical places that you carry an unusual like uh, authority over that geographical area. And I don't know if that's nations or what uh, multiple nations or just regions or uh, I feel like in certain nations there's going to be just almost like you can stand in a place of authority over that entire nation. Hallelujah. What I was seeing as he was prophesying is that the Lord is going to use you as a key within Europe to bring massive healing where the gospel has been rejected because of bitterness that has sprung up in the hearts and whereby it has defiled many. And as you brought forth a presentation tonight of the heart of the Father, of forgiveness and mercy, and even the heart of the Father 
towards Adolf Hitler. It will break down walls over the entire region of Europe, says the Spirit of the Lord. And it will break it open for the gospel, says the Lord. I want to make sure you have a word. Leslie, I've been holding on to a word for you since like Monday, so if you could just come up here, that'd be great. just see in the spirit like you're like this pressure cooker and you feel like you are about to explode and you're like and everyone's gonna see it and everyone's gonna see like I'm like I'm a mess I'm just messed up and I don't want anybody to see it I just I want to remain calm but it's like everything just keeps building up and you just feel like you're about to explode and you don't know what to do you don't know where to go you don't know what to ask you're just in this waiting period of any moment I'm going to self-destruct. But God says the explosion that's coming to your life has nothing to do with emotion. Nothing to do with emotion, but that you have been under pressure because of the call of God on your life. <laughs> it's a very simple thing. You're not going crazy. You are not losing your mind. You are being um, refined like gold, even as a diamond um, under um, carbon, uh, carbon, it, when it is pressed together, it becomes that diamond, but it must go through extreme times of pressure. And so I see you um, as Jacob um, wrestled um, with this angel of the Lord, is how scripture puts it, but what I believe is he was wrestling with the person God called him to be, Israel, and who he was currently, Jacob. And God's asking you tonight, who's going to win? Israel or Jacob? Because I've called you to be Israel. And so this day, he is saying, give it up. Stop running. Take a deep breath. Because I have been with you to the ends of the earth. And I will follow you into the depths of hell. Wherever you go, he goes. So, Father, for Leslie, I thank you that she has waited and that she has persevered. And, Father, right now, I thank you that you are bringing healing to every situation. Father, that even relationships that she thought would never be reconciled will be reconciled. And she will have peace in those areas. And she'll be even able to sit with these people in the same room and have a cup of coffee and say, how's life? How are you doing? And that she will have genuine care for these people who she once held bitter, the most bitterness for. Father, I thank you, God, that you love her, that you have not been judging her, that there is no condemnation. But, Father, that she is called according to your purpose and that eye has not seen and ear has not heard what you have in store for her. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes people wonder, why, why do the leaders all get to get prophesied to? <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, a lot of times they get overlooked and everybody else does. But, but you know, you, you build up a leader and you affect their whole sphere. You know, so that's important too. But, but God has some other words for other people too. And this gentleman with the blue shirt here, um, uh, you're a leader, I believe, as well. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> you just kind of could see it over you. But uh, what I saw uh, was that the Lord um, <clears throat> had given you a sphere a while back. And I, I'm seeing spheres, okay? The Lord gave you a sphere, and it was like, oh man, this is, uh, you know, this is, it, it took you a while to really 
cultivate and to like uh, take dominion over that sphere uh, and uh, you did a good job at it and now it's, it's like you've you've conquered that sphere and now it's almost like okay it's old hat and it's kind of boring and it's like okay you know it's like uh, but, but the Lord's getting ready to in, enlarge your sphere because I saw that uh, that season of plateau is just about over with and I saw you almost like uh, uh, sitting in a backyard peeking over the fence uh, and you've done a good job of cultivating your little backyard, but you're peeking over the fence and you see a great big field out there. And the Lord's getting ready to give you that field. And there's going to be some new things that uh, begin to happen. And uh, are you involved in worship in any way? Yeah, I'm on the worship team. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, because I, I felt like there was it had to do with worship as well. But... Um, but it's like God's going to let you. It's like what I saw was you were peeking over this fence and there was a big, big playground. It's like filled in a playground. And it's like you'd been playing in your little sandbox. But all of a sudden God's getting ready to open up. You're getting ready to get released into that big playground. And there's big slides and there's all kinds of fun new things. And so the Lord's going to... He's going to satisfy some longings that you haven't been able to uh, really experience. And so I just saw this release into a new sphere and some new things coming on. There's also a teaching gift. I don't know if you're doing that, but you're, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but also, uh, I want to just uh, really encourage you because I believe the Lord's getting ready to like light a fire in your teaching gift. It's like it's not just going to come out of your head, but it's going to come out of your spirit. And even, even your teaching is going to be uh, prompted out of your spirit. I don't know if you understand what that what I mean by that, but, but rather than coming out of your head, nothing wrong with coming out of your head, but, but I, I just saw like a, a fresh, like a prophetic fire being attached to that teaching gift. Amen. Hallelujah. Good. Hallelujah. Got some? Yeah. Uh, just keep on going. Oh, okay. Yeah, the the lady in the red blazer there. Man, I was I was just like I'm gonna sit down, and God's like, you better not, not until, not until. What's your name? Latanya. La You're beautiful. I tell you, that's how God and God sees you that way, and He knows it's the real deal because He fashioned you that way. Amen. Do you dance? Recreationally, maybe, you know? <laughs> well, I, I have to ask because every time I looked over here, I saw you dancing. Every time. And I hear the Lord saying that uh, it's, it's a representation of freedom. It's a representation of who you are. And I just see that uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of systems and a lot of people that have tried to place identity on you that is not who you are. And you've wrestled with that because it's, you felt like you've been bound. And I see a lot of it is bound to opinion. It's bound to expectation. Uh, even bound to self-image. And I hear the Lord saying, if you could see what I see, you're a dancer. You're free. You're free of all that mess. And I just see right now, I see the Spirit of the Lord. He's just breaking all that stuff off of you. And I just hear the Lord saying that within you, you're like a treasure chest. You're full of good things. You are full of gifts. You're full of anointing. You're full of power. And I hear the Lord saying that uh, even there, there's been some blessing through, through, through your family. There's some things you're not aware of uh, that even the Lord uh, has done as part of a testimony of your life that you don't even know the details of. But I hear the Lord saying this is a time where he's bringing you into your own. That you're going to begin to know who you are in a brand new way. And I hear the Lord saying you're a dancer. You're one who's called to walk in realms of freedom. You're one who's called. I, I just hear the Lord saying that as far as you're concerned, freedom is contagious. That when people get around you, they're going to they're gonna have an encounter with who, He who is freedom. He who is freedom. And I hear the Lord saying, now that you understand I don't expect anything from you, what do you want to do? What do you purpose in your heart? I just hear the Lord saying that He's not a taskmaster, but He's behind you the whole way, cheering you on. Uh, I, I just see even in education, there's an anointing on you to assimilate information. And I hear the Lord saying, I, I built you that way too. Purpose in your heart. What is it that you want to do? What are you excited about? And I hear the Lord saying, rest assured, I'm excited about it too. And I see that the Lord is going to even deliver to you. There's supernatural knowledge. There are things you're going to get from me that go far beyond your book smarts. You're smart. You really are. But I hear the Lord saying, you're also wise. 
And a lot of people are smart but not wise. And so, Lord, I just thank you now for even a supernatural expression of, of, of the way she assimilates information. I hear the Lord saying, you're going to demonstrate wisdom. So, Lord, we just speak that now, right now by faith. I, I just bless my friend. I bless this sister in God. And, Lord, I thank you for the freedom that she carries. It is contagious. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. This lady right here. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, this is your mother? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. What, what, as soon as I looked over at you, the Lord said, there is an intercessor. There's a woman who is carrying uh, people in her heart and is affecting things way beyond what anybody sees or knows. And I also heard the Lord saying that you're a famous friend. You are a, uh, you're, a, you're one of those ones that, uh, it's like you are a, an amazing friend to some. And that's way more important than most people realize. But I saw that there was two particular people that you are, are, are friends to, uh, are connected to, and kind of like carry in your heart, and you have their ear, and you have a, a level of influence. And these two particular people, uh, you're very, very important in their life. You're very important to speak into their lives because even as they have a bigger influence, you have bigger influence because you have their influence. And uh, so I saw that uh, even uh, you felt like at times where, well, what am I really doing? And uh, do I, uh, am I really making that much effect? And you know, those kinds of things. But the Lord just really wants you to know that those things that you are doing, and especially those things that you've been doing in secret, are going to bring great great reward. Uh, and part of that is that you are strategically at the right place at the right time uh, uh, with re uh, uh, support and reinforcing of those uh, two particular people that are people of great influence themselves. Hallelujah. Bless you. Hallelujah. And uh, this couple here. Hallelujah. Um, what's that? Oh, yeah, yeah, good. Can we stand up? Yeah, go ahead. Stand up, yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah. This is a little awkward because I don't really have authority to, like, do any kind of setting people in. Uh, I'm just here observing, discerning, and things. But I just, what, so I'm going to put it this way. I discern a real heart of caring in you two. Uh, you could call it a, a P, <laughs> maybe a little, <laughs> little pastor with a small P, but I just see that you guys have a sphere of influence. I don't know if you lead, do home groups here or anything like that, but these guys would be great to do something like that. Uh, ah. Yeah, because um, I saw that you have an influence into certain people's lives that other, others wouldn't be able to have, and you have the ability to... The, Pastoring is really just the ministry of caring, and you both have that deeply in your heart. It's like it's all over you, you know that uh, pastoral mantle, the pastoral calling, and and uh, again, I, I, I it's scary to say that, and because that means different things to different people. And I, uh, like I said, uh, the the authorities in the house know the timing and timetable, and whether to make that a big P or a little P or whatever. But uh, but I just really see that that ministry of caring is in your heart. And uh, there's a real strong prophetic mantle on you as well. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we just bless that. We just bless that. Lord, we ask God that you'd open her mouth, Lord, and fill her mouth with your words, Lord, in an even greater way. Hallelujah. 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 And... Um, what I see is a strong gift of faith inside of you. Lord, the Lord's giving you almost like a tenacious faith. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, like you lock on and you won't let go. And, you know, like that's why bulldogs have uh, nostrils out the side so they can grab on and still breathe, you know, and not let go and still be able to breathe. You know, I just saw that level of tenacious faith. And so that's a gift of God as well. And that level, that faith as a foundational gift will take you into miracles and healings and some of those other things. And so don't neglect that and in fact stir it up because that's another part of what God has for you as well. Um, oh gosh. Okay. Um, one thing I wish somebody could tell me every day is that I'm a good parent. 
And I just feel the Lord saying, you guys are great parents. Amazing parents. And I just look at your boys and they just bring me such joy because I just see such little men of the Lord. And I was in their room the other day feeding the baby and I was looking at all their walls and I was like, there's Bible verses on the walls. It's in their handwriting. He wrote a note to his mother. Like, this is awesome. I was like, what amazing parents. And, um, but anyway, I just wanted to encourage you that as your boys go out and, um, I know it's, it's everybody's heart to shelter your kids, but you don't have to make any extra effort to shelter your kids. They already know the love of God. And even when they're out in the world, my, my mom was wonderful. My, my dad had his issues, but my mom was great. And um, I have served the Lord from a very young age, and I had a good taste of the world one time, but I had tasted God before I tasted the world, and he ruined me for anything else. And that's exactly what you are doing for your kids. And so he just wanted to encourage you and say, you guys are awesome. You're amazing. Don't doubt. You're doing awesome. Ashley, I just heard the Lord say to you, your defender is strong. And any opposition that comes against you, he's got your back. Doesn't matter if it's coming from behind you or beside you. Even those closest to you, he's got your back. You're going to come through this, and you're going to shine good as gold. It's all for your good. And don't look at people and say, well, you know, they were supposed to do this, they were supposed to do that. But God says, I'm using this as a process so that you can learn to trust me. Amen. This guy right here. What's your name? Ricky. Hallelujah. Ricky, you've kind of been looking at others and watching others and thinking, you know, well, uh, they can, but I don't know if I'm really going to be able to. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be allowed to do that kind of stuff too. Uh, but the Lord says, absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I uh, looked at you and the Lord said, he's got a sharp mind. He's got an ability to teach. He's got uh, everything that uh, I've put in him uh, that will equip him to be the leader that he's kind of daydreamed about being and the Lord says it's not just a daydream uh, it's a calling it's a, there's an invitation coming to you uh, to even dig in deep and uh, to uh, take do the equipping that you may need to do but but that uh, it won't be in vain because the Lord's got a leadership call on your life and I just really saw a sharp mind a sharp mind you got a sharp mind and so uh, even um, <clears throat> you're in a great place <laughs> with this seminary and uh, uh, you know a brilliant uh, is this your church here yes, sir. okay <laughs> a brilliant pastor here and stuff and a great apostolic structure and uh, so uh, hallelujah um, <clears throat> and hallelujah let me just uh, see what else I think there's a couple of more things the Lord wants me to tell you hallelujah hallelujah yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's been a couple of forks in the road for you, and uh, uh, that it seemed like you took some wrong turns, and uh, it, it's like, it, oh man, it's like, uh, almost like uh, opportunity for regret. Uh, but the Lord just has, uh, wants you to know that he is amazing at redeeming our boo-boos. <laughs> okay. You know, and uh, but that I saw two more forks in the road coming up, and what you do on those at those forks is going to be very strategic and very important. And so, as you come before these next couple of decisions in your life, uh, choose the kingdom. You know, obviously, and the Lord's not going to let it be confusing. In fact, I saw you coming up to this next one that's kind of close. Actually, uh, there's a there's kind of a fork in the road coming up, and um, true. So like uh, some relational questions. And I saw that the Lord was going to be standing in the fork of the road, waving his flag, lights flashing, and the, the decision is going to be easy to make if you just want to follow the kingdom. But if you make those right decisions, the Lord's going to continue. I saw you getting to that fork in the road, and if you make the wrong decision, he's going to haul you back. But if you make the right decision, he's going to put you on an escalator, and there's going to be an, uh, an acceleration of things. And so just give yourself, even as Paul told Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah.
good. Okay. Um, hallelujah, Jesus. See, here's what I believe. I believe that God always has something to say to his kids. And if we had time and endurance, <laughs> we could, we could, uh, we could, uh, I could guarantee that God would want to talk to everybody here. That's just my plate, my level of faith. Okay. And, uh, cause he always has something to say to his kids. <laughs> and, uh, so who are you pointing to? You want me to prophesy over her? Ah, okay. Now you really put me on the limb. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but you know what? If, if you don't get a prophetic word, that doesn't necessarily mean God doesn't like you or, or anything like that. I mean, you've got a whole book full of his word, you know. And, and, uh, but he'll, he'll communicate in other ways as well. Uh, but uh, amen. Yeah. So, uh, but don't you just love prophetic ministry? I, I like a simple definition. is God talking to somebody through somebody. <laughs> you know? And uh, so, Lord, just talk to this great lady right here, right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> right, everybody stretch your hands toward her and help me here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Talk about intimidated. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. What a... I mean, this lady deserves a trophy. I just, I just saw that... I, I just saw like the, uh, the trophy case in heaven. And it was just full of things that... Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the sacrifices that you've made and the ways... And, the, and uh, things in secret... You know, and it says that uh, the things done in secret will be shattered from the housetops. And that there's like a big broadcast going off in the heavens uh, of the things that you deserve and the, the ways that God's going to honor you and has honored you. And I just heard the Lord saying that uh, one of the ways that he's going to do that, I feel the Lord strongly telling me right now to just pray some f for physical wellness. And I don't know anything about anything going on, but I just really feel like the Lord just really wants to come to your rescue in regard to some physical wellness. Hallelujah. So Lord, we just thank you, God, for this precious uh, uh, matriarch in the kingdom, Lord, and uh, all that she's done and all the ways that she's served, uh, even the, the apostle and uh, been an apostleess herself. <laughs> I don't know if that's theologically <laughs> whether, okay, does, does that fit into the <laughs> apostle seminary theology? I hope so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if not, you, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, because you two are one, and, and I mean, all the stuff that, it's almost like um, <clears throat> the things that he's pioneered, and the things that he's done, and the, the ways that he's influenced, and dragged you all over the world, <laughs> really. <laughs> but you, I mean, you went gladly, right, I, I think. Uh, but, um, but. Oh, hallelujah. I just, you know, I just, my, my heart is exploding right now with just the feeling of gratitude that the Lord wants. He is grateful. The Lord is grateful uh, to you for the, for the ways that you've served in secret, the ways you've served in public, the, the things that you've done, and even in just the fact that he has so needed you, and you have, you, he would never have been able to be who he is or what he is or without you right there beside him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but but uh, 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 okay, let's see if I can. Should I get a word of knowledge or should I just ask her what she needs healing for? <laughs> Allergies and arthritis. Okay. Lord, we just ask strengthening, strengthening uh, for her bones and her ligaments and her joints. Hallelujah, Lord. And uh, I, I pray, God, for a leveling out of the chemistry. Lord, all the chemistry, uh, the calcium and the chemistry, Lord, and every, every uh, part of, uh, I speak to the blood. Blood come into order in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Speak to blood sugar. We just say, come into right order in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I just heard the Lord saying that as he's leveling some of that stuff out, uh, that uh, you're not to worry about, uh, uh, like you uh, sometimes feel like, well, I'm getting forgetful or something. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> In fact, I hear the Lord saying that because of even from this night on, you're going to find uh, almost like a reversal where you're getting sharper and sharper minded, you know, and because uh, you're a, an amazing administrative gift as well, an amazing host, amazing. And I got blessed by getting being hosted by this wonderful couple, couple here. But, uh, but uh, hallelujah, God loves you so much. Amen. <laughs> We, uh, 9.30. We're not going to quit. We're going to just keep right on going. Right out the door, right over to our pillow, and then right off to work tomorrow morning. Right. We'll give one more. One more. Okay. Hallelujah. How many of you want to prefer you? No, I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, Lord, okay, who, who is just really, really needing a prophetic word? I felt like this guy right here, uh, that uh, the Lord just really wants you to know that he's coming to your rescue Hallelujah. And uh, th there's been some uh, things that you felt like, almost like you've got, you've been wading through mud at times. It's like it's been so hard. Almost like there's uh, like uh, chains on your feet and you've been just like wanting, you, your heart is so good, but it just seems like circumstances have just dragged you down. Well, the Lord just wants you to know that he really is coming to your rescue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And there's some things that have, uh, like, that he's doing a, a deep, deep mending in your heart right now. And you're going to find a fresh grace coming into you, yeah. which is the empowerment from heaven. And uh, uh, that uh, is going to take ta uh, choices. And it's going to take uh, casting down imaginations. It's going to take renewing your mind. But, but as you follow that path, as you do the work in between your ears, the Lord, you're going to see that the Lord does the work on the, the outside and the circumstances in your life. And he's going to bring you through. Even, and I even saw that uh, there's been almost like you were almost... Um, you're almost... Uh, uh, <laughs> scared to hope scared to hope but the Lord says uh, no you don't need to be afraid to hope you know that, uh, that those hopes and dreams that you've had are not have not been uh, uh, even <coughs> deferred uh, there's been some hope deferred that has made your heart sick but the Lord says those hopes are, will be fulfilled and uh, that uh, the, the Lord says those things that you've dreamed about doing and hoped to do and almost like uh, I kind of sort of want to and I'm afraid to hope to I'm uh, because I don't want any more disappointment but I heard the Lord saying that no he, he wants to help you and bring you through to the fulfillment of those things that he's put in your heart to do to serve him and to further his kingdom I even saw like a, uh, the, the, um, you're writing some stories do you write Used to. Okay. Well, we just brush that off. That's the brush off the dust of that gift. And we just call it forth again in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Almost like uh, sci-fi kingdom novels. Would that sound cool to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, and this li wonderful lady, what's your name? Marie. Marie. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Sure, yeah. Rabbi, you got a prophetic gift, don't you, too? You could have been right up here prophesying like the rest of us, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord, we just thank you for this lady. Uh, hallelujah. What an amazing, amazing Sure, uh, Rabbi Shandara. I see you even like going behind enemy lines. <laughs> into the kingdom of darkness and into circles that they're like they don't want to have anything to do with God but they like you <laughs> and uh, uh, and I saw you like uh, doing kind of like uh, uh, sorties, little missions into that room and bring, dragging them back, you know. And uh, uh, particularly, there's some, uh, there's, uh, but uh, the the 
burden that's been on your heart is like you've got a heart for uh, and, and you've served the kingdom, you served the purposes of the kingdom, but you've thought at times, well, when is it going to be my family? When is, when is my family going to come around? I've prayed for others, and I've prayed certainly prayed for my family, but when, and, and all my intercession for others, and I've seen it have an effect, but what about my family? And I heard the Lord saying that, uh, daughter, your prayers are not in vain. Your intercessions and your tears are not in vain. And the Lord says, I am setting them up. I am even working behind the scenes. I'm even setting a trap. Because I'm gonna, uh, because I got there that, that my hook in them a long time ago, and they may feel like they're running free, and they but they're just running out the rope, and when the rope is uh, fully, I'm gonna yank that rope, and they're gonna come right back in, and you can bank on it, says the Lord, because I am the hound of heaven, and I'm gonna chase them down, and I'm gonna bring them in, and even your prayers are accelerating that process, and it's almost like those bowls are almost full of incense, and it's about ready to tip, so keep it up, says the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You got anybody else that just really needs a word? God always has something to say to <laughs> Okay. You stand up here a second. Pick somebody. Mary. In pink? Yes. Mary. Bless Mary. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> How many of you think God loves Mary? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many of you think God really has something he wants to build her up and edify her yeah. with? <laughs> How many of you know that all we need to do is be a conduit? All we need to do is learn how to hear from heaven and we'll hear what he has always been saying and wanting to say, wanting to bless her with. That's how it works. It's like God, you know, it says, I think it was David who said, uh, the multitudes of your kind thoughts toward me <laughs> every day are more than the sands of the sea. God's always thinking good things about you because you're his kid. And so if we can just tap into that and hear it and deliver it. You know, so God loves Loves Mary. Hallelujah. Lord, we just bless Mary in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Mary, God cares about that little stuff too. Okay. And uh, it's like I almost heard you saying, yeah, but the thing that I'm really concerned about is not a big deal to anybody else. But it's a big deal to God because it's a big deal to you. If he cares about every sparrow, he certainly cares about your puppy dog. <laughs> or like your cats or whatever you got. I don't know. <laughs> None of those. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Lord, we just thank you, God, for her. And uh, you know what I, I'm hearing the Lord saying is two things that he just really wants to commend you about. And that you too have been one of those intercessors where you've been at times. It's like that's not the only thing you do. But I just saw the Lord giving you uh, assignments at times. And you, that burden would hit you. And before you totally understood how all that worked, you'd think sometimes when the burdens hit, well, man, I must be going crazy. What's wrong with me? I keep crying and around. And, you know, everybody else is happy and I'm crying. And then when everybody else is crying, you're happy. You know, that's kind of how intercessors work. But I just saw that the Lord was dealing out some of these uh, assignments at times. Uh, but then the, the other thing I've seen is uh, a, uh, a real gift of like uh, service and administration. Hallelujah. That you're an organizer and you're, it's like you're very uh, conscientious of needs. It's like that's that's an amazing gift. You're like some people can walk in and just be oblivious that you know uh, there's a, a a cord on the thing that needs to be rolled up, or there's a, a little thing over here that needs to be fixed or set set up. Or uh, but I just saw you like almost having um, uh, like a built-in awareness of the little details that need to be taken care of, and that's a gift from the Lord. In fact, the gift of, of administration is a supernatural gift as well. And so don't minimize it, uh, but it is a gift of service to the king. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And also, Lord, we just thank you, God, that you're uh, bringing health and wholeness to her in every way, Lord. Hallelujah. Your bones, too. Lord, we just strengthen her bones in the name of Jesus. Strengthen her bones, Lord. Strengthen her bones, Lord. Uh, even have you hips? You've been having hip trouble? Yeah, okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pour your healing power into her, Lord. Just mend those joints, Lord, and that hip, Lord, the, that hip pain. We just drive out the pain, and Lord, the source of the pain, we ask, Lord, even a creative miracle, if need be, Lord, that you would recreate, yes. recreate yes. those hip joints in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Now, now, now I got myself in a big trouble. Okay. He said, do I get to pick one now? <laughs> so, <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. I just, I'm really overwhelmed because I've been so just deeply privileged and blessed and honored to make your acquaintance and to just feel like a, a, a connection has happened since I've been able to be here. Shane has been telling me for several years, you've got to meet Dr. Corey. You know, and I said, I want to. Yeah. But uh, so I just really appreciate yeah. you. And uh, so if I can separate my own personal feelings and emotions, and uh, I'm going to try to do that, okay? So let me pray for a second. Because I just want to give you uh, what God has to say as well. I mean, I, you know, how, how many of you know it's sometimes it's hard to prophesy over something you have an opinion about? You know? <laughs> But you can do it if you've learned, if, through practice, you have your senses trained, you know. And so, so hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for this man of God. We thank you for, Lord, the, uh, Lord, the things that you've been forming. And I almost feel like even though you're known around the world and you've got a, a whole network and everything else, but it's still almost like you've been hidden to a degree. And, uh, but that uh, the things that have been formed in secret and that have been shaped in secret and have been forged through those times and uh, those, those things that you've, the sacrifices you've made, the diligence you've given, the prayer, prayer, pr man, you're a man of prayer. I was <laughs> just like, man, this guy is a man of prayer. And those things that have been forged through the, in those secret times and those secret places and uh, through the years shaped, uh, things that have been shaped and forged that could have not come any other way, but it's like a, it's, it's, it's perfected now and it's ready to export. You know, it's almost like uh, when they made McDonald's, it took a long time to get the first one just right. <laughs> but then once they got it right, they started exporting it everywhere, you know. And, uh, and that's where I feel like you're at, is that you've really polished this thing up, and it's, it's perfected and ready to export. So I see like almost like the Lord lifting a veil uh, in the, uh, the, there's, a, there's about to be a, an unveiling to a higher, uh, further degree where you're not going to stay as much hidden. And I, not that you've been totally hidden, but that, you know, that uh, uh, people all over the place are going to be recognizing uh, the, the uh, uh, what it is that you've done here <laughs> and what it is that you carry. And uh, hallelujah. I just see more books. Books, books, books. Be writing those books, man. <laughs> Getting that stuff out. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 And Lord, I just pray as well, God, uh, for strengthening, physical strengthening. That's not time to retire. Come on, what are you talking about? <laughs> God's just got some, he's just gotten you ready for some uh, new things. And I just see uh, fresh strengthening coming into your physical body uh, because of the assignments. But you're not going to, it's not going to be real laborious because you're going to, you're going to extend your Yourself through others and you know exactly what that means you know and uh, so Lord we just bless that in Jesus name and Lord everything he needs Lord everything he needs from heaven I just say pour it in Lord pour it in Lord pour it in thank you Lord hallelujah 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 Okay, let me do one more span. Okay, I think we're done. <laughs> Woo! 
This has been awesome, guys. I want to tell you, there's um, a lot of things that's impacted my life, and um, I want to, first of all, I want to say, I would not be who I am today if it wasn't for him. But when it happened. And what I, what I really feel like the Father is saying, you've sensed it before this meeting. What I hear that the Lord is saying is something you have sensed before this meeting started. It's that the method of the kingdom has been made known to you. And there's an unveiling of his heart that is going to engulf the method to make it a reality to complete your mission. I'm going to tell you one thing that has happened to me is the presence and the love of God has made so real to me, especially tonight, that I'm a wreck. You know, I promise you, I don't think I'm ever going to be the same. We all say that. Touch your neighbor's cell, I'll never be the same again. <laughs> but I mean that. I mean that this has been an amazing, an amazing conference. Dr. Welton, my friend, I'll be forever indebted to your sacrifice. I love you, my brother. And I'm going to run this race with you, and I'm going to fight along your side. And that's what we do. Matthew, you know I love you, man. You're like one of my favorite people, though, in the world. <laughs> he, he, I'm partial to Matthew. I, I really am. <laughs> Stan, I love you. God has given you an incredible, incredible mind and a grit. You know, I, I think a true grit. I think of it's, it's a true kingdom grit. You're going you're gonna to go the long run. You're not going to stop. You're completely sold out to the cause. To the promise. And I thank God for your endurance. Your spiritual endurance. It will pay off. And Dr. Inez, for you the best is yet to come. This is an amazing lady right here. And she sits back quiet and she'll shake her head. No, she's one of the most tremendous Bible teachers you'll ever listen to. If you notice on my book out there, her name's on it. Why do you think that is? It's because she took a book I wrote in 2007 and she fixed all my screwed up eschatology. <laughs> yes. She's an amazing woman of God. I love you guys. I'm just... I'm just thankful for his presence and everything he's done. Leslie, the best is yet to come for you. <laughs> Donna, I bless you with healing and strength and wholeness. Pastor Marvin, I love you. Dr. Will, you're stepping up, brother. You're coming higher. Yeah. Yes. Matthew, you want to tell the people about the product before we, before we go? <laughs> Encourage them to go buy these books. <laughs> I was just told Jim, I said, I, I don't know if I've seen Shane this way. <laughs> it's kind of like a half drunk, oh, I love you. <laughs> I love you, man. No, you. I love you. <laughs> and, but it's great. I'm not making light of it. Man, you know, sometimes I get around kingdom guys, I'm like, man, can you just let loose for a minute and just be a goofy for a minute? Man, you know. No, oh, I know, I know. That's what's beautiful about it, you know. See, what we miss is sometimes our armor begins to separate God out of our, the equation. You know? And all of a sudden you realize, I feel distant from God. It's an illusion. Something you built. Not something God built. 
God just says, let, let the guard down for a second. Yeah, the assignment's important, but I loved you without an assignment. I loved you without your revelation. I loved you without your burden for the nations. <laughs> Amen? Okay. So, man, there's a preaching anointing on this microphone. It's good. <laughs> Well, but what we'd like to do in closing, and uh, we want to give a last call for the, all the wonderful material that's out there. Uh, I was telling Jonathan, you know, sometimes we have to remind people it's not for decorative purposes out there. It's not because Bishop said, let's have a little market outside so people can buy and sell. It, it's, it's material that equips and helps us to further our journey. Uh... There's a number of you capable ministers. If we think we got what you are in a weekend, we're kidding ourselves. Amen? And I'll say this. If you think you get who we are just by buying our stuff off the table, you're still kidding yourselves. But it's a start. So I want to advertise Ever Advancing Kingdom. It's an amazing book. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm, I'm ready for that next book to be out in the hands of the people. I've, I've been a little aggravated that it's not out yet, but all in God's timing. Amen. Uh, Jonathan, all his stuff is awesome. I'm a little upset he didn't bring normal Christianity with him. That's how I was introduced to him by way of his writing. But uh, Eyes of Honor, I, I sent him a private message. I read through that book. It wrecked me. I said, that, that must be required reading for all believers. Because it ministers, my, one of my passions, issues of righteous identity. And I told him, I said, brother, I read that. And there was stuff I thought I had a handle on. And God's like, ah, let's just take it to the ninth degree. You know, <laughs> just, just let me minister to you, son. So, and then Raptureless, if you really need some more in-depth journey with what we've been talking about this weekend, go grab it. Uh, and then Bishop Curry, you know, we were talking about the, the method, the framework, the infrastructure of what God is allowing us to steward right now, what he's breathing life into, get out there and get the books. Amen? Sometimes I feel like people think, I wrote a book so I can put it on my bookshelf and look at it and say, hey, I wrote a book. Awesome. That's, it will not help me for that to happen. The only way it will help you is if you get them, you open them, you read them, and say, God, give me the grace to walk them out. Amen? So don't, don't even have to buy any of my stuff. Get their stuff, okay? It, it's just that good, and it will do you a lot of good as well. Amen? All right. So do you want me to just close it out in a blessing? Or Okay. Well, let's stand up to our feet. This has been awesome. Hallelujah. I'm so glad there wasn't an admission charge tonight. I know I couldn't have afforded it. I mean, it was so good, so rich. Lord, we just thank you for who you are tonight. We thank you for what you have done in our midst, what you're going to do in our midst. Lord, I thank you that even what has happened over this weekend, I don't believe any of us have a grasp on what has been set in motion. I was telling Stan today over a cup of coffee, I said, I feel like this weekend was a trial run. This weekend's a trial run. And we're going to begin to see... Uh, gatherings and conferences of such substance that I see saints are going to prepare as soon as they know. I see months and months of preparation because they will become aware of the significance of the impartation of truth and the impartation of spirit. So Lord, I thank you for that caliber to continue, Lord, to be honed in to its greatest effectiveness. We're not shotgun ministers. We're laser beam ministers. Amen. We want to go for the heart of the matter every time. Lord, I thank you. Your sons and daughters are blessed. Blessed more than they know. Blessed more than they can comprehend. And I ask you, Lord, be patient with us as you continue to reveal to us what you've already done for us. Lord, I just thank you. I, I feel like just a baptism of love in the house. Hallelujah. I even hear that, that song, we all need somebody to love. We all want somebody to love. And I hear the Lord saying, I'm singing that over you. I need you so bad, it's not even funny. I want you so bad, it's not even funny. Lord, I thank you. Lord, strengthen the house. The, 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 fi the financial line of things, Lord, I, I decree it as met in the name of Jesus. Lord, and, and, I, and I, just, I just want to decree this. Lord, touch hearts. 
for those that weren't even able to be here and they start receiving this online, they start seeing this, they're going to be pricked in their heart. I've got to send a gift. I've got to send something. I'm not just going to receive this for free. There's no way. So I thank you for residual blessing as a result of what's happened here today. So Lord, we just thank you for it now in the strong and mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you guys. We love you. Go visit the product table and don't just visit. Go and get something. Take it home with you. Amen.